Just a question of interest as we conclude. Why do you think we referred to when we work with a cubic graph the word local, maximum or minimum? And when we work with the parabola we refer to if it's for instance the parabola like that we refer to this point just as the maximum. If you compare the two graphs for the parabola that maximum is absolute. You cannot pass beyond that point for the parabola. But when you go to your QB graph, when you are at the maximum, it is a maximum up to a certain point. The graph then turns to a minimum, and as it turns at the minimum, it passes that maximum. Hence, this one is not as important as the one by the parabola. So in colloquial language, we normally say he's a local guy. He's not that important. So this is the local maximum compared with the maximum of the parabola. And when you take the graph and it passes that point, it means there are points higher than that. The cubic graph is probably a very, very interesting graph in terms of summarizing our knowledge, not only on the straight line. We've noticed that we actually brought the straight line into the discussion on a few occasions. When we asked the question, what happens at the turning point? And we said that is when the gradient is zero. If the gradient is zero, then it means that the angle that is formed with the x-axis is naught, and hence it's running parallel with the x-axis. So it's a line running only through the y-axis. If the gradient is positive, as we saw, the line is sloping up, if the gradient is negative, it's sloping down, and hence the tangent that is formed to that graph becomes a unique line at that particular point where it touches. I thank you for your attention. If we go back to, to where we started, we started with the cubic a graph y equals ax cubed. And we were saying that in this particular instance, we actually found in the first question that we had that one of the factors was repeated. Hence, the x value that we get over there will also be a turning point. And that is the, the important idea that I want to leave you with, is when you find difficulty in factorizing the cubic function, always first find the turning point and check whether the turning point coincides with the x-intercept, then you know you will already have two of the brackets instead of having to go and check the long way of using the remainder or the factor theorem.